This is what your textbook starts uh, chapter 11 with, but I think now is the appropriate time for us to address this now. So it comes down to the question of the types of elementary interaction. And I know when I teach physics 4A, I tell you about all these contact forces. Turns out none of those contact forces are elementary interaction. And up until this point in your physics education, we have only dealt with two elementary interactions, gravity and electromagnetic. All the kinds of contact interaction at the very elementary level, they are electromagnetic interaction. Electromagnetic interaction between atoms in my hand and the atoms are here. They, when you put them close, yeah, okay. So it, when we were looking at the atomic nucleus earlier, that was the first indication that um, this might not be all the interaction that's out there that can explain our universe. Because when you look at this atomic nucleus, it cannot exist if this is all there is, right? So you might look at, okay, so beta decay, that's a nuclear interaction, and that, um, you know, it involves some kind of interaction that doesn't involve electromagnetic force because this neutrino is electrically neutral, so it probably couldn't have anything to do with the electromagnetic interaction. But when you look at this types of beta decay type of interaction carefully, um, it turns out that the properties of beta decay, it doesn't really fit in. So there's some kind of new interaction that's involved here. But it's not the new interaction that would explain this. Here's one reason that I can tell you actually. So this kind of new interaction, it involves the new particle neutrino, right? And what's the one defining characteristic of a neutrino? Electrically neutral. Okay, that's one. Uh, how did you? How did you? How did we infer that it's electrically neutral? Um, conservation of charge. Okay, I guess you could do it that way. Okay, so why couldn't there be two neutrinos? That's a one positive, one negative. So there was one other experimental fact that we had to fit that made us infer that it's electrically neutral. What was that experimental fact? We don't detect it. We don't detect it. That it is virtually undetectable. So the fact that it's virtually undetectable also kind of excludes this as participating in whatever interaction this is. Because if there's one thing you can say about this, uh, nu this nuclear interaction, is that it's a very strong interaction. Whatever it is, it must overcome electrostatic repulsion between protons. So this is a very strong interaction. And if this neutrino participated in that strong interaction, then we would have detected it, electrically neutral or not. Because it would have interacted with the other uh, atomic nuclei around it, and we would have somehow seen it. And not by electromagnetic interaction, by, but by that other type of strong interaction. So whatever interaction this neutrino participates in, it's not the strong interaction that you see here. So the interaction that neutrino participates in, uh, it's, it's apparently yet another type of interaction that's not involved in holding up the nuclei together. So we call it, we give it another name. It's called, um, I guess, uh, I don't know when particle physicists became more creative, but this name must have been given before they became more creative. Because the name they gave to this interaction was, any guesses? Well, this is what they called it. They called it weak interaction. <laughs> so the theory of beta decay which um, if you want to look up the names, the people who came up with the theory of beta decay were uh, Pauli, as I mentioned. He's the guy who suggested the neutrino. But actually the name neutrino wasn't from Pauli. He wanted to call it neutron before we had a neutron. <laughs> um, so the name neutrino comes from a guy named Enrico Fermi. Enrico Fermi. He's an Italian physicist. I think he came to US during World War, or around World War II. So in US, there's a national lab called the Fermi Lab. 
guess who that's named after. <laughs> so, uh, Enrico Fermi is the one who came up with a theory of beta decay that correctly predicted some of the decay rates. And it, that is the theory of weak interaction. And the picture that I'm presenting here is not actually the full theory of interaction. You saw in the little diagram, you saw there were two mediator bosons for the weak interaction, W boson and Z boson. They are apparently not drawn here. So the correct version of the Feynman diagram for weak interaction actually looks like this. Neutron turns into proton, emitting a virtual boson, virtual, I guess, W minus boson, and this decays into electron and neutrino. So <laughs> that's what the full picture is. Uh, let's not get into that right now. <laughs> um, but so this is a new type of interaction. But it's, a, it's entirely separate from the interaction that's holding the nucleus together. So, which means um, there's yet another fourth interaction. It's kind of a, so with the particle physics, this is gonna be a common theme. You start out with a relatively simple description that you thought was the complete description of your universe. Then you have a little, this odd little thing where you have to start introducing new things and then it explodes into a whole Thing. I guess with the forces, we are lucky that the fourth one that we introduce, we think that's the last one. And we st uh, we, no one's suggesting any new interactions. And that fourth interaction, we call it strong interaction or strong force. Once again, I suspect these names were given before particle physicists became more creative with their names. Um, so what I want to use the rest of the time today is the early descriptions of this strong interaction. Um, and this is where we pick up description of something that's referred to as Yukawa's meson. 